this preview, brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria. Adam Hamilton with you to have a look at this 12 race harness card at Melton's Tabcor Park this evening uh, with the big card. We'll get straight into the action now. And uh, we start with uh, a good race where the key runner without any doubt is the uh, former WA Mayor in Bollinger Baby, drawn nicely in Barrier 1. First start for the Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin stable and uh, has posted the nine wins over in WA but more importantly uh, comes across to join their stable uh, and has been uh, has appeared at the Ballarat trials back on the 17th of August and uh, won the trial only narrowly over stablemate Mr 1-2 who also goes around tonight but the sectional times were brilliant home in 55.6 the last 800 metres. Bollinger Baby's drawn nicely uh, if she has the gate speed with uh, Michael Stanley taking the drive. She's a sister to the outstanding pacer Chancellor Cullen. Really does look the one to beat. Bollinger Baby number one to beat number three Illawong Cath consistent. Has the gate speed to use the draw. 12 better believe it has a little bit of a touch of class for a race like this. Doesn't win out of turn and has the back row but still in the mix and drawn nicely is number two pieces of you. But it's really all about Bollinger Baby off the back of that trial and the nine wins in WA. One, three, 12 and two in the first. Let's go to uh, race two now. And uh, this is, uh, well, this is an interesting race. It's not an overly strong race. And uh, I'm going to really focus on, uh, on one here called Kick It to Chris. When you look at its uh, form on paper, you might say, uh, how can he be tipping this? But uh, the form has been in much, much stronger races for Kick It to Chris of late. Um, yes, it does have the back row. But if you go back five starts, it was an eye-catching run in one of the Vic Bread qualifiers behind one of the most exciting paces in Victoria, You're a Nut. Kicker to Chris should be some sort of uh, each way value tonight despite the huge drop back in grade. Uh, I'm going number nine, Kicker to Chris on top to beat number 10, Big Z, who has been uh, a real uh, a real improver in uh, in recent times didn't have much <coughs> excuse me much go right last start uh, does have the uh, outside back row draw but still could get a nice trail through number six win the crowd um, might end up doing the work outside the leader is racing consistently for the strong Emma Stewart Clayton Tonkin stable and I'm living the dream um, is an honest grinder doesn't have any real stamp of class uh, about it I'm living the dream but might continue to work forward and get into the mix and be there at the finish. Nine at some sort of value ahead of 10, 6 and 7 in race 2. We go to the third event. Um, this is one of the better quality races of the night for the Trotters. Uh, Kai Valley Blur has always had a tremendous uh, wrap around him from trainer Chris Lang Sr. There's no doubt he went through a little bit of a form slump maybe uh, uh, t sort of over two to three months ago, but um, uh, Kai Valley Blur has rebuilt. The last couple of runs have been terrific, and I want to take you back to the win last week at Melton. This was uh, a really good pointer, and this is the sort of big finish you might expect to see from Kai Valley Blur. Getting the trail into the race there in the uh, in the green and yellow colours as we go to Dan's call. Earl of Mott hit the lead, going to it, Ridgehead Cahora, now Kai Valley Blur over the top. Kai Valley Blur surges up outside Ridgehead Cahora, it's Kai Valley Blur in front and Kai Valley Blur's too good. Beat Ridgehead Cahor. Third, it'll go to Earl Harbour, uh, just in front of Earl of Mott, who gee, just never looked comfortable tonight. Uh, then and it's actually uh, no harder than uh, than what Kai Valley Blur took on last time. So uh, I'm making my uh, Kai Valley Blur my bet of the night tonight. Race three, number eight. Smallish field, um, should get a nice trail into the race and looks to be the trotter who has got the uh, most upside to it. Eight, Kai Valley Blur, the American bred, to beat number six alone again. Tremendous win, two starts back, then tried to come three wide from a mile back and, uh, and was disappointing last time. Smaller field, front row suits. Number three, Earl Harbour has got tremendous gate speed. If it was able to pop to the front and maybe take a trail, it would be there as well. And Tenderdon's been around forever, but the last couple of runs have been good signs, maybe to be able to get into the minors somewhere tonight. Very keen though on eight Kai Valley Blur ahead of six three and nine in race three. The Quaddy starts tonight uh, on the fourth event, and this is an even race. There's some nice paces on the way up here, and it's a good little start to the Quaddy. Um, there's been a, a scratching or two that's changed the race. Aleppo Tigers out, who uh, certainly would have been in my top four. But I'm going to go here with a cheap tint. 
was burning up the country tracks before uh, coming to Melton. And, uh, and the last start was a really good effort, making up tremendous ground from uh, well back in uh, what was at least as strong, if not a better race here last time. Number four, Cheap Tint, goes to the front row this time, uh, popping it on top to beat number 12, Narrow Operative. I was super keen on, uh, on this one last week for Peter and Karen Manning. Got back and couldn't really get into the race and was disappointing. Mr. 1 2, number 13, uh, is back with the Emma Stewart Clayton Tonkin stable. Ran second in those Ballarat trials behind Bollinger Baby. So if Bollinger Baby wins race one, Mr. 1 2 will certainly, its stocks will improve here in the fourth event. And then uh, now I've put Timeless Era, who is racing well uh, on the country circuit. Uh, South Australian border hopper. Inside of the back row draw, not ideal over the 17 20, but still one of the chances. 4, 12, 13 and 8 in race 4. That's the first leg of the quaddy. Let's have a look at the second leg of the quaddy now. And One of the most improved paces in Victoria has been uh, Haver Bender, a former South Australian who was border hopping between South Australia and Mildura for quite a while, went to the Jeff Webster stable, has gone to another level. Goes from taking on Bit of Bliss and running really well. Uh, uh, didn't quite have the zip at the end of the finish of Bit of Bliss last week, but still ran on tremendously well from uh, from a long way back in, a, in, a, in an upfront dominated race tempo-wise. Huge drop in grade. Again, you're always a little bit wary of backing horses drawn uh, out or wide on the back row over the sprint trip, but Haverbender looks better than his opposition. 12 to beat the ultra consistent number five composed who will enjoy the front row draw. Toulouse Lautrec is uh, racing in great heart, will need luck from inside of the back row, and Artok is uh, racing with a renewed, uh, renewed. I guess vigour towards uh, towards the races and has just been tremendously consistent of late and has barrier two. Uh, 12, 5, 8 and 2. That's the second leg of the quaddy but you might need to go a little bit wider if you can afford it. Now we're going to ha go over to race six where uh, Tab has got behind this one with a guaranteed uh, first four pool of $25,000 for this sixth event. It's nice and open as well. Uh, I'm pretty keen on uh, on our femme fatale, though, to win this one. She's uh, she's a little filly, but she's tr she has been tremendous in some of the better races this season. And uh, the, the fourth in the Breeders' Crown final behind Frith only a couple of weeks ago was a really good pointer for this race. On paper, you might say Roger's uh, passion beat her home in that race, but Roger's passion probably had a five times easier run just sitting in behind the leader. She's still got some chance in this Roger's passion, but I'm with our femme fatale. Um, she's versatile. She can do work and still be there at the finish. 13 to beat Roger's passion, who from inside of the back row will certainly need a little bit of luck. She has got a lethal finishing burst if she sees daylight at the right time. Uh, Tandy as Bromac has got good gate speed, will look to work forward, maybe even try and find the front. A number 11 spokeswoman comes to town with really good form for uh, the, the state's leading trainer, Shane Cramp, up around that Sunraysia area. 13, the little filly to beat 8, 7 and 11 in race 6. Let's go to the seventh event now, and uh, this is one of the better quality races of the night. I'm going to take you back to Breeders' Crown Finals Day and uh, show you the performance of Carpenter's Daughter. And this is the, uh, the former Kiwi. Now she's officially based over here with Marie and John Caldo. Yes, she had the 1-1 trail here, but this was against some really good quality mares. She has to pull out and dig deep, and it's a really good performance. Here's Dan. Light and every day in front. Carpenter's Daughter born again, Sassy. Light and every day in front from Carpenter's Daughter. Light and every day. Carpenter's Daughter grabbing it and got up. Carpenter's Daughter's won it. From Light and Every Day, Born Again Sassy, Lama Shane was probably... Yeah, she's a good quality mare, this one. No doubt about it. I like her. She's my value bet of the night. She won't be favourite. Uh, maybe you're looking somewhere around the sort of $5 mark for Carpenter's Daughter tonight. Drawn Barrier 2. And we've got uh, Johnny Caldo taking uh, the drive again tonight after that Breeders' Crown win. So I'm going with her to Carpenter's Daughter. Uh, better Give It will uh, probably be the favourite here. Uh, she was really good in, uh, in one of the uh, the Breeders' Crown uh, races, the Mare's free-for-all during that series there. In fact, she was a good thing beaten in second spot, uh, held up at a crucial stage. Then she took on XL Stride and Company in the Breeders' Crown, open free-for-all. Didn't have a lot of luck, but was outclassed. Number four on the Razzle resumed with a good run on Breeders' Crown Day. Worked hard to get to the front, tired late. Probably the leader again here. And number 11, Excitus in the City. Perhaps a shade disappointing last week, but the previous form have been... 
really, really good after having some tough runs and, uh, and it's got an upset chance in a strong race. 2, 1, 4 and 11 in race 7. Tremendous race, that 7th event, the last leg of the quaddy. Now we move on to uh, race eight at Melton tonight. Uh, this one is for the Trotters again. Nowhere near the quality uh, that, we're, uh, that we saw in action from uh, the Kai Valley Blur race earlier on in the night. Uh, I'm going to go for a Commander Jewel here. Has made tremendous uh, improvement under the care of uh, one of the great trainers in Peter Manning. Karen Manning takes a drive. Three wins in a row. Going to make it four in what is uh, definitely a much harder test tonight. But um, it also has really good gate speed and may be able to end up finding the front here. If it does, it's going to be very, very hard to beat. Number three, the Kiwi bred uh, Commander Jewel. To beat number seven, Michael Thomas, who has been a story of uh, what if right throughout its career. Always had a lot of ability. We got to see a glimpse of that last start. Only pretty new to the uh, Lisa and David Miles team. Good second last start, but does have that wide draw. Number 10, Maori Vacation, was strongly fancied and had to deal with some traffic issues last start. Will enjoy being able to get out in the open this time, number 10. And uh, it might be uh, challenging for favouritism and one of the big chances. And uh, next best, I thought, was the uh, enigmatic number 2, Orlando's Dream, who, if it showed gate speed, uh, loves to get to the front and just be cut loose and run along. And the short trip could see it in the finish. 3, 7, 10 and 2 from me in race eight. We go over to uh, a fascinating race nine at Melton tonight. And I think the key runners uh, are drawn nicely here in numbers one and four, although Franco Jackson comes into, uh, now comes into barrier three with the scratching of Grinner's uh, winners. Uh, Bl the Black Forest I'm going for here, but we might have a scenario where it's Franco Jackson in front. Uh, Franco Jackson's uh, a newcomer to the Andy and Kate Gath stable, uh, is a very quick beginner and went to the Melton Trials on Tuesday and impressed their winning in, uh, in good time. Uh, the stable's been producing some uh, horses to win well first up lately, and Franco Jackson might have strong support tonight. The Black Frost was driven upside down last night, um, has a tremendous amount of potential, this horse, and Barrier 1 will certainly suit. Daniel Dack takes a drive. Um, don't know if it'll have the speed to, uh, to go early with Franco Jackson, but I'm going to go 1, the Black Frost, just ahead of number 4, Franco Jackson, the big watch runner. Number 11, Kremlin, is uh, ultra consistent. And uh, next best now, I'm going to pop in number six, the, uh, the consistent real grit. So one to beat four. I think one of the two will win this race. Next best, 11 and six in race nine. We go to the 10th event on the program. Uh, this is for the uh, two-year-old paces. And it's a little bit of a tricky race to, uh, to sort out as far as uh, uh, your multiples go. But uh, we're going to have a raging hot favourite here in Melita Bromack for the uh, Dean Braun and Chris Elford stable. They've had a phenomenal season and they can finish it up here in style. Melita Bromack's two runs have been certainly good enough to come out and win this race. And the main danger, who was fast rock and page, is out of the race. So really it's, uh, it should be a matter of how far for Melita Bromack, number nine. She's Pinkalicious for uh, the uh, Noel and Ruth Shin stable was, uh, was really good at its only run. Um, probably not quite up with the level of what we've seen from Melita Bromack in two runs. Three Secrets uh, went around and finished fourth at Maryborough on Wednesday. And in the same race, Miss Minnie Lombo, number seven, ran seventh and didn't have a lot of luck. So uh, Three Secrets I'll pop in for third and Miss Minnie Lombo for fourth. Nine, eight, three and seven in race ten. Let's go to uh, the 11th event now, this one for the three-year-old trotters. And we've got a couple of key updates from uh, the Maryborough Racing on Wednesday here. The Majestic uh, made its debut after some really good trials and did just about everything you could do wrong in a race here at Maryborough. Galloped on a number of occasions but was sent out a red-hot favourite. If it mends its manners, it's certainly going to be a factor in this race uh, from Barrier 2. Super Zek was in the same race, was uh, right up racing handy outside of the leader and, uh, and broke and made a mistake, but it was big odds in that race. So um, I'm going to go here for uh, Chevelle's racer. Returns to racing for David Aiken, who's had uh, just the most tremendous season, and Chevelle's race has got form in much, much better races than this. More importantly, has had three recent trials 
and won two of those. Um, David Aiken's son Josh was uh, aboard for the most recent trial win at Shepparton. Chevelle's racer on class, on trial form, to beat number seven, I Dreamt It, who's racing really well, uh, and Daryl Douglas takes a drive from the wide draw. Number two, the Majestic, if it mends its manners on that inglorious debut during the week, it's obviously got the talent off the trials. And next best in a pretty thin bunch outside of the top two, really, is number nine, Kai Valley Racer. Three, seven, two and nine in the three-year-old trot race 11. We get to the final event uh, and we've mentioned uh, Karen Manning's team a, a few. Well, Karen Manning's drives and, uh, and her stable a few times on the run through in this preview. Well, she holds the key to the last race. I think anyone who saw Willow Robin, the former WA, a uh, former New Zealander who'd been racing in WA and is now new to uh, the Karen Manning stable. Anybody who saw Willow Robin impressively win the Horsham Guineas last week would have been waiting for it to step out again. Looks very well suited here, number three, Willow Robin. Obviously uh, well and truly clicked since uh, since joining Karen Stable. Uh, it gets the nod. Number three, Willow Robin on top. I was taken by the uh, the first up win of Major Landscape for uh, Kate and Andy Gaff. That was last week at Melton. Buried three back on the inside. Saw daylight late and went absolutely whoosh in an easier race. It's going to be harder this time, but the small field should suit. Big Ben Penny is uh, consistent and can be thereabouts for the miners. And I've got a little bit of time for McRita, who uh, probably has form in easier races races in this but might be one to pop in for your multiples three five four and two in the last of the 12 races on this marathon card let's get into uh, the summary uh, of the meeting now and uh, I'm really, really keen, as I mentioned on the way through, Kai Valley Blur in race three, number eight. This emerging trotter for Chris Lang. Chris Elford takes a drive. I just think it'll pack too much speed for them at the end of the race. It's a trotter going places against many others who are probably uh, nearing uh, the heights of their careers. Value bet comes up. The Breeders' Crown champ. It's not often you can say that, but she won't be favourite tonight. And uh, I like her to win again in a really, really strong seventh event. Race seven, number two, Carpenter's daughter. And let's have a look at the suggested quaddy. Remembering it starts on race four tonight. I think we need to go uh, fairly wide, particularly in the first two legs, and then we can come home a little bit thinner in that, uh, in that race seven. But uh, here in the first leg, I'm going to go numbers four, eight, 12 and 13. Then we get to the second leg, two, four, five, eight and 12. Third leg, 7, 8, 11 and 13. And where we can trim down a little bit is uh, by maybe just taking the three of them in the last leg. One better give it, two Carpenter's Daughter and number four on the Razzle. I think those racing up on the speed can control uh, one of the best races of the night, race seven, the last leg of the Quaddy. That uh, will cost you $60 to get a 50% a 50 slice of the Quaddy if we're successful. Really good program of racing. Don't forget the early start with the 12 races at Melton tonight. Uh, you can check out all of the fixed odds markets around about 10 minutes before each race at tab.com.au. Good punting on Melton tonight. This preview brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria.